الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد we begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise him and we request praises and blessings upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To my dearest brothers and sisters in Islam, I greet you with the greetings of Islam, the greetings of peace and the greetings of the people of paradise. Salamu alayhi alaykum wa rahmatuhu wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon you all. I welcome you all to episode number seven of our short Dhul Hijjah series together, the Hajj and the family, common foundations. In today's episode, brothers and sisters in Islam, I want to talk to you all about the Ihram and try and draw parallels between the idea of the Ihram and the Muslim couple, the husband and wife, the foundation of the Muslim home. And remember, we are talking about common foundations between the Hajj and the family and how we can look at the Hajj and the days of Hajj and the family of Ibrahim alayhi salam and better the family unit and bring it closer to the idea preached by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam regarding the ideal Muslim family. When we talk about the ihram, brothers and sisters in Islam, we talk about this idea of us entering into a state. And that's how uh, we find the lessons pertaining to the ihram come across. They say you are entering into the state of ihram. Okay. Uh, what does entering into the state of ihram mean? It means that you are entering into a state whereby there are restrictions. There were things that were permissible for you before you entered into the state of ihram. And now whilst you are in the state of ihram, those permissible things are impermissible until you come out of the state of ihram. Now, you can imagine from this that the state of ihram isn't uh, referencing wearing the two white cloths for a male. Right? Because this is applying to both, the idea applies to both the male and the female. Wearing the two cloths for the male is due to us being in the state of ihram. Or you're not allowed to be in the, in the state of ihram with sewn clothing. So before you get into the state, you uh, remove sewn cloth, uh, uh, clothes that you are wearing and you adorn yourself with the ihram. Many people uh, misunderstand what it means when we say you enter the state of ihram. They think it's about wearing the two uh, cloths of ihram. Yes, the two cloths that you wear during the Hajj or Umrah are known as the cloths of Ihram, but they're known as that because you have to be wearing that or similar to not go against the idea of uh, or the rules of the state of Ihram when you enter the state of Ihram. And that rule is that you shouldn't be wearing sewn clothing. So you're entering a state. But brothers and sisters in Islam, is it just about having a mindset that I've entered the state? Right, that I'm in the state, so these are the do's, these are the don'ts, and then when I come out of the state, then, then these will be the do's and these will be the don'ts. Is it just about that? It's far more than that, brothers and sisters in Islam. Because there's lessons and wisdoms governing us being in that state. And when we enter the state of a haram, we have to see beyond it just being a circumstance that we are in. But rather, we need to see it as an experience, as a journey, as a school. Right? Because from the lessons of the haram, no doubt, uh, is the lesson that if we can stay away from that which is permissible for a period of time, then no doubt we can stay away from that which is impermissible from the outset. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made something permissible, impermissible for a period of time, and, because, and, and due to this, we, uh, we, we oblige, right? We follow the rules then this means that we are teaching ourselves that we can follow the rules. That if we can stay away from halal for a period of time, right, because of Allah's command, then we can stay away from haram throughout because of Allah's command. Why do I say this? Because no doubt, brothers and sisters in Islam, it's easier to stay away from, uh, it's, it's harder, it's harder to stay away from halal than it is haram. Somebody might say, this, this sounds strange. How can that be true? It's, surely it's harder to stay away from haram, right? And uh, the opposite is true, brothers and sisters in Islam. Because if you do halal, Allah builds your jannah. So to stay away from the opportunity of your paradise being built should be harder. 
and on the other side of haram is the fire of Jahannam. So you already have a deterrent. So in reality, or it should be, it should be, staying away from haram should be more difficult. Because on the other side of it is the hellfire and punishment and doom and gloom and disaster and cat catastrophe. But on the other side of halal is Jannah and a more beautiful Jannah. So with this context, you would say it's harder to stay away from halal than haram. And if I am staying away from halal because of the command of Allah, for a period of time, then surely I should be able to stay away from haram. You proving to yourself the state that you are in has wisdoms and we need to focus on these wisdoms. Now, um, we can go on discussing this whole idea of ihram. But um, given that we are confined by time and uh, we want to connect this to the family, let's let's take the idea of, of ihram and bring it across to uh, the marriage, the Muslim marriage, right? The Muslim husband and the Muslim wife and a Muslim man taking a wife under his covenant and by doing so they both enter a state a different state to the to the ihram state because in this state what was previously haram becomes halal for the period that they remain in the state subhanallah right so th th there's, there's a parallel here um, when you in when, when when you are in the state of ihram there's rights and responsibilities upon you when you get married and uh, a covenant exists between a man and a woman, there's rights and responsibilities that also exist uh, between them, right? Now, as we said, it shouldn't be about us having this uh, do and don't mindset when you are in the state of ihram for hajj and umrah. In the same way, brothers and sisters in Islam, it shouldn't be a mindset of uh, do and don't when you are in the state of the covenant of marriage after marriage but rather we need to look at the wisdoms we need to go beyond the rules because there's always wisdoms uh, beyond the rules and when we do so brothers and sisters in islam do we move from uh, the platform of rights onto the platform of responsibility right uh, this is important we move from the platform of rights onto the platform of responsibility and this is what the state of ihram is trying to bring into our lives to make us see beyond just rights and make us see uh, with the vision of responsibility and marriage should do the same the state of marriage should push us towards having the vision of responsibility as well because we shouldn't just be focusing on my right and your right as a husband and a wife but look at the wisdoms behind uh, the, the concept of a marriage and earlier we said uh, in earlier episodes that marriage is about us um, uh, testifying that Allah exists and he's the only one worthy of worship now, what do I mean by rights and responsibilities? Well, rights, brothers and sisters in Islam, we find them in the books of Islamic jurisprudence, right? And they formulate the basis of the relationship. But who said that Islam told us that a marriage should exist upon the base rules and regulations, the base idea of the relationship? No one said this, right? And if anyone says that Islam does, then the idea that rebuttals them is the marriage, marriage and marriages of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because we see that he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam existed in his marriages upon the platform of responsibility and he wanted that from his wives as well. Rights we go to when push comes to shove, when the future is looking bleak, when oppression is creeping in and now we need to lift the fog and understand exactly who's right and exactly who's wrong and sometimes both are wrong but to what extent is a party wrong and to what extent is another party wrong now we look at the rights but ideally we should live as a couple based on the ideas of the state of the marriage like we said the ideas of the state of the haram and these ideas push us towards being responsible towards each other that it might be your right that your husband does something to you and your right that your wife does something for you but it's your responsibility that you forego that right and you act upon the uh, in in you, you you act with benevolence and this is where responsibility comes in let me give you an example to make this clear because it's always theoretical until we bring a practical example let's look at rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam with khadija radiyallahu anha when he married her she had the house he didn't have the house do we see her demanding rent from him saying it's your it's my right that you put a house over my head do we see this we don't see this she was, she was a responsible wife. And this is what promotes love within the spouse towards another. Do we see the... Uh, let, let's take for example Khadija. She had a daughter called Hind. Right? Uh, as uh, Ibn Kathir and uh, others mention uh, in the historical accounts uh, of the seerah. They mentioned that she had a daughter called Hind. And the Prophet 
looked after Hind as if Hind was his own daughter. Was it his right to uh, behave like that? Nobody was responsible. And Khadija witnesses this. And imagine what love she feels for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then later on, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, requests for Ali to be brought into his household because he wants to be responsible towards Abu Talib who looked after him when he was young and Abu Talib had a big family and he wasn't doing uh, he, he was struggling financially meaning not struggling but a big family requires a lot of resources so he wanted to lessen the burden on Abu Talib and bring Ali into his home do we see Khadija complaining and saying no it's my right that we live together this is my house that he stays out if he comes here where will our privacy be when will we spend time to do we see all this there's no voice of Khadija in this way in the hist history of Islam. Subhanallah. So this is the idea, brothers and sisters in Islam. right? Drawing this parallel, the common foundations between the Haram of Hajj, which puts us in a state, but the idea goes beyond the state. And the marriage, which brings a couple into a state, but the idea goes beyond the state. Subhanallah. And this is, we need to think about this, brothers and sisters in Islam, especially during these noble days, these days of Hajj, the best days of the year. How can we better our relationships by being responsible with each other, right? And not only uh, dealing with each other as if we're on a scorecard system and it's all about rights and I win here and you win there and you got yours today and I'm going to get mine tomorrow. This is not a marriage, brothers and sisters in Islam, right? I leave you with these words to ponder over. You contemplate your marriage or your idea of marriage and think about what I'm saying and use it as a yardstick to figure out uh, how you can develop yourself and in developing yourself you develop the family as a whole i love you all for the sake of allah until next time assalamu alaikum wa rahmatuhu wa barakatuh allahu akbar allahu akbar allahu akbar allahu akbar allahu akbar allahu akbar la ilaha illa allah allahu akbar allahu akbar walillahi alhamd